This is the Math 2 lesson summary video for the lesson entitled To Be Determined. In Lesson 7, To Be Determined, the purpose of this lesson is to determine if quadratic functions can be written in all the three forms that we have studied so far, standard, vertex, and factored form. We will discover that not all quadratic equations actually have x-intercepts and discuss what this means about our factored form. We also discuss the fundamental theorem of algebra, where any polynomial to an nth degree will have n roots. We'll talk more about this in a minute, but since a quadratic function has a degree of, or highest degree of 2, we know that it should have 2 roots. In Lesson 7 of Unit 5, we are asked to look at a table of values and a graph and try to come up with the standard, factored, and vertex form of different quadratics. Examining number one, we can see that the x-intercepts will be the points negative 3, 0 and negative 1, 0, as this is where the y values are 0 for our functions. So we know our x-intercepts are negative 3, 0 and negative 1, 0. Based on our prior knowledge in this class, we can use these solutions to write our factors as x plus 3 times x plus 1. So we know that our equation would be y equals the quantity x plus 3 times x plus 1. In order to get standard form, we know that we can multiply out the factored form so if we multiply our standard form of x plus 3 times x plus 1 and we distribute, we will get x squared plus 1x plus 3x, which is 4x, and 3 times 1 is 3. Therefore, our standard form is y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. The other form we've talked about in this class is vertex form. Recall that the general vertex form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k, where h and k is the vertex. We can see from this graph, as well as from our table, if we go to negative 2, negative 1, we see that is our lowest point in the table. So our h and k will be negative 2 and negative 1. We can plug that into our formula and we will get x minus a negative 2 would be plus 2 squared and then minus 1 is our k. Remember there are two ways we can get the a value. We can get the a value by looking at the graph. From the vertex we go over 1 and up 1 times a. So we can see that our a is 1. So we'll replace this, and of course we don't need to have a 1 there. We can just keep it as y equals x plus 2 squared minus 1. The other option is for us to pick any point on the graph. Let's say we pick the point 0, 3, where x is 0 and y is 3, and we plug those in for y and x to solve for a. So if we kept a in our, um, in our vertex form, we would get 3 equals a, 0 plus 2 squared minus 1. And when we solve that, we would add 1, so we're going to get 4 equals 2 squared is 4. So when we divide that, we also see algebraically that we get 1 equals a. So there are multiple ways to do this one. So our vertex form is indeed this equation here. So then we move on to number two. And in number two, if we look at the table to try and find our solutions, we can see that our zero value for y would be between here about and here. There's no zero in the table, which means that our solutions will be irrational. So on this one, let's start by finding our vertex form. We can see our vertex is the point 
negative 2, negative 2. So we can plug that into our vertex form and we would get x plus 2 squared minus 2. Using our knowledge from unit 4, let's plug in another point from the parabola. Let's say we plug in the point 0, 2, which is right here. So in that case, our y would be 2, our x, and we're solving for a, would be 0, and we need to solve this for a. So if we add 2 to the left side, we would get 4 equals 2 squared, and divide by 4, again our a value is 1. So we actually don't need to write an a value there, we don't need to write 1. So we do know this is vertex form. And recall that we can get standard form by, from vertex form by just redistributing it out. So x plus 2 squared means x plus 2 written twice and a minus 2 on the end. So let's redistribute what's in parentheses and then subtract 2. We should get a standard form of x squared. That would be 4x plus 4 minus 2 would be plus 2. So our standard form should be y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2. Now, based upon what we know from the table, we do know that this parabola would not have rational solutions because we can see our whole numbers are in the table for x and y, and we don't see our x-intercepts. So we do know that they are going to be irrational answers, and we can see that they are in between two whole numbers on our number line. So what we do know from prior knowledge is several things. Number one, we can get the x-intercepts by using the quadratic formula. Recall that the quadratic formula is x equals negative b divided by 2a, which is the axis of symmetry, plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And that whole second part is the distance. So recall from our previous um, lesson, the axis of symmetry here, which is negative 2. So when I plug this in, I already know the axis of symmetry is negative 2. And I'm going to plug in my a, my b, and my c from standard form into my quadratic formula. So b squared would be 16 minus 4. a is 1, c is 2, divided by 2. So let's simplify this and see what we get as our solutions, negative 2 plus or minus. That's the square root of 16 minus 8, which will be the square root of 8 divided by 2. Now, the square root of 8, we actually can simplify that mathematically because we can rewrite that as the square root of 4, which is a nice perfect square, times the square root of 2 over 2. And so the square root of 4 we know is 2, and those 2's will cancel. So my solutions, my irrational solutions or roots to this quadratic function will be negative 2 plus or minus root 2. Now if we go to our graphing calculator and we type in negative 2 plus root 2, if you look right here, we see that it's approximately negative 0.59 and negative 2 minus root 2 is approximately negative 3.41. So if I go back up to my graph, let me just look to see if those look about right. And my x-intercept does look to be about negative 0.59 and about negative 3.4. So I would say that those are correct solutions. Um, refreshing our memory from a previous lesson, also recall that if we can get this distance, d, from the axis of symmetry to the x-intercept, then we can estimate um, our x-intercepts that way as well. Okay, so as we progress to 3, we can see visually that this quadratic function only has one x-intercept, which is right here. We can write the solutions. Um, recall the solutions to this would be negative 2 plus the distance comma 0 or negative 2 minus the distance comma 0 and that's just from a previous lesson. 
where that negative 2, remember, is your axis of symmetry, so x equals negative 2, and the plus d would be the distance. However, in this case, there is no distance from the vertex point to the x-intercept because it only touches the x-intercept in that point. So therefore, our distance we would plug in to be 0, And we can see that, of course, our only solution, or our only x-intercept in this case, would be the point negative 2, 0. And we would actually have two of those, right? So our, vertex, or our factored form would need to be x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now, is there another way? That, that would be our factored form. And then to get our vertex form, recall that the, um, the h is the negative 2 and the k is the 0. So that would be a times the quantity x plus 2 squared. It would be a plus 0. But we really don't need to add that plus 0 on the end. So we can put it just like that. And we can find a algebraically by just plugging in a number. Or we do know in this case that a would be 1. If we do plug in any value from the table, we will get 1. So this will be my vertex form and my factored form. And to get standard form, we'll just redistribute the factored form. So we should get x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right. So... Now let's move to 4. Now 4 is interesting. We notice right away that the parabola does not cross the x-axis, but we are still asked to find the standard vertex and factored form. We will continue to find the vertex form using our knowledge from Unit 4. So we can see very clearly that the vertex here is the point negative 2, positive 1. When we plug a point in for x, so let's just plug in our vertex into our formula, and let's plug a point in for x, let's just choose 0, 5. So I'm going to plug 5 in for y, and 0 in for x to find my a, I get 5 equals 2 squared, I'm going to put that 4a plus 1, I'm going to subtract 1, so I'm going to get 4 equals 4a, and I can see algebraically that a is 1, so I'm just going to keep it as y equals. Recall we don't need to write the 1 there. Okay, so there's our vertex form, and again, to get our standard form, we can FOIL that out, so let's do that up here. We're going to write x plus 2 out twice, and FOIL it out, or distribute refer the distributive property um, terminology. So x squared plus 4x and plus 4 plus 1 would be plus 5. So there is our standard form. All right. So now we are asked to get factored form. The way we know how to get our x-intercepts for a quadratic function that does not cross the x-axis is we're going to use the quadratic formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation in standard form and I'm going to move along to another page and we're going to work through the quadratic formula. Okay, so I've written my a, b, and c values um, for number 4 here and we're just going to plug it into the quadratic formula. I will get negative 4 divided by 2 times 1 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5 divided by 2 times 1. So we're going to simplify. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus and minus. Let's simplify what's under the square root. We will get 16 minus 20 divided by 2. So when we subtract what's under the square root, we are going to get negative 4. Now that negative 4, um, we can simplify into negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 
times, let's just leave a negative 1 under the square root because we know the square root of 4 is a nice perfect square. So let's see if we can just rewrite that. And the square root of 4 is 2. And that's nice. These twos will cancel. And x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 1. So that is telling us what our x values are. If we use our same knowledge from our prior units and we try to write these as factors, recall that you just switched the sign when you're writing it as a factor. So for example, I know that one solution is negative 2 plus the square root of negative 1. Well, what happened when we wrote those as factors, it would be x plus 2 plus the square root of negative 1. And then my other solution would be negative 2 minus the square root of negative 1. So my other x, or my other factor should be x plus 2 minus the square root of negative 1. So if we use the same methods that we did in previous units in order to find the factors, those would be the factors. So let's write those back over here under factored form, and that was y equals, oh, actually, I have this here. I'll just move it for us. So, and I'll just put a y equals next to it, just like so. So in 5, Miriam suggested that we test out our factors from 4 by plugging in x and y values from the table. So let's check the point negative 2, 1 negative 2 being x and 1 being y into our factored form of the equation. So we want to make sure that this is indeed accurate algebraically. So I'm plugging in 1 for y, and anywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a negative 2. And we're just going to simplify this. So I see a negative 2 plus a 2, which actually mathematically would give me 0. And again, I see the same thing over here. So essentially, we're going to simplify this. Um, let me just draw a vertical bar. So 1 equals negative square root of negative 1 times the positive square root of negative 1. Now, we can get rid of those parentheses, and we can see that we are multiplying the same quantity. So I can rewrite that as the quantity square root of negative 1 squared. Um, this is nice because the square root and the square will cancel out, so then I'm left with 1, let me scroll down, 1 equals negative times negative 1, which is 1. So it does check. So our factors are accurate. If we move now to 8, we can see again that this parabola does not cross the x-axis. So you will have to use the quadratic formula in order to find factored form. But you're going to do the same things we've done previously to find vertex form and then standard form. The last part of this lesson talks about what we call the fundamental theorem of algebra. What this simply states is that an nth degree polynomial function has n roots. So in 10H, we discuss in later classes how you will look at higher degree polynomials, such as x cubed and x to the fifth power, and you need to be able to know how many roots or solutions they will have. So the nice thing about the fundamental theorem of algebra is that the highest degree will actually tell us how many roots the polynomial has. So a cubic function should have three roots, whether real or imaginary. So in this question, we are focusing only on quadratic functions. And we are asked, do they all have two roots? And so what we said was, yes, they do. And they are either real or imaginary. But all of our quadratic functions that we've been working with do have two roots. If you need more help on the Ready, Set, Go homework for this task, please check the Canvas Student Support site.